Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be working on the rest of this Italian Greyhound's face. We're going to try and get the face done today and then all that's left is the neck and chest. Everything you need is linked in the description below including the colours for this part of the tutorial and all the previous parts that we have done before. Um, I hope you're enjoying it and let's just get straight into this piece. Now, I'm sure by now you know what I'm going to say, but um, one grey one as our base layer. And we're just going to start off by uh, this side of the eye and work across the face. Okay. I'm just going to add some of the fur coming across here and we're just going to start blending the side of his face into his nose and muzzle area. I've now got the nugget and I'm just going to bring the nugget along this side of his face and again paying really close attention to that fur direction. And just along here. And then take the warm grey four and I'm just going to go over this nugget area and blend into those previous grey areas that we've already got um, drawn out. It's really cold here again. We have snow again so we we've had ice the past couple of days now we've got snow and it is um, snowing, so I'm really cold. What's the weather like for you guys? Because I know you're not all in the UK like me. So I'd be interested to know. Okay, that's the one grey four. Um, I'm then going to take the cold grey five is what I want. Cold grey five. And I'm just going to bring this over. It's just going to add a little hint of a blue tone and neutralise some of the other of a greys. And along here. And then we're going to take the one grey two over the top just to help with that blending okay um, I'm going to take my dark sepia and I mentioned last time I just wanted a little extra fur detail so I'm just going to use the dark sepia very light pressure just to create some of this fur that I can see especially on this part of his cheek I just want to sort of just define some of this fur a little bit more than what we've got. Um, I'm just going to take the um, Cold Grey 6 along here for the fur definition. So we're just getting a little extra fur definition now in, in this um, part of his face. And any areas that just need darkening a little bit. Right, okay, I'm happier now with um, that. Okay, so we're now going to take the one grey free and I'm going to bring this very light, well, medium pressure, I wouldn't say too light. Blend out from there. Again, following that fur direction. This needs to go in a pencil extender. I think I said this last time. <laughs> okay, and then get the... Um, 
the warm grey 5. Uh, so I've got the warm grey 5. And just very lightly, I'm not pressing too hard with the warm grey 5. Just bringing that in here. Um, and then I'm going to use the cold grey 2 this time. Just over that little section. Instead, this is instead of the uh, warm grey 2. And you can see we've just got a nice little blue tone because um, we're getting a bit of a highlight here now. Um, and I'm going to do the same here. I'm just going to come in with this cold grey 2 along this side of the face. So again, we're going to be using a lot of our greys just to build up the face. Okay, um, I'm going to take my one grey four and we now have a section of fur here where the muzzle and the eye is kind of meeting. So this is coming um, a different fur direction, which we just need to map, map out. So this is with the warm grey four, and that's going to blend into there. Now again, I'm not, I'm not worried about this being an exact photocopy of this dog. I'm using the photo as a reference for the fur and the shading, uh, like the contrasts. But I'm also making this dog my own, which is all part of the fun when you um, do something like this. You can make it your own. Um, and then we're going to take the warm grey free. Um, I've got a longer warm grey free. I'm not going to use this one. <laughs> oh, hang on. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but the easel moved. <laughs> um, right. Sorry, warm grey free. And again, I'm following the fur direction. Any curves that I can see. And that's going to come down here a bit more. Okay, um, taking the warm grey 5 very gently just to add a little fur detail. Okay. Starting to get a nice looking uh, greyhound here now. Uh, a cold grey two. Just going to accentuate this little highlighted area here. Um, and then my cold grey five. Again, just some little fur lines. Not too hard. Just a little extra detailing. And coming down here as well. Okay. Um, cold grey 2. And this is a highlight across the head. So I'm just going to use some medium pressure. And go over the top. And this is going to give us a nice shiny look to the fur. As we start bringing in the rest of the face. Okay. Back to the one grey 1 as a base layer. And I'm just going to cover all of this section. As a base layer. I'm 
Okay, so it's quite a big section, but we're just going to break it down into smaller sections like we do. Right, so we're going to start by bringing the fur down from the top of the head. So I'm going to take my one grey two first and we are going to start by bringing this fur down because this section of the nose is um, darker in colour. So we're going to start with this lighter area and then we can start blending this dark colours into this highlight and get that nice shine across the head. So I'm taking my one grey two and I'm just going to start by bringing this one grey two over here again. We've already added one grey two in this section. But we just want to start blending it now into this base layer that we've just added. And I'm going to bring that down into this highlight of the face here. Um, my cold grey too. And then I'm going to take that one grey free and just going to use this one grey free to add some little details of fur as well as just blending this darker patch of fur into the lighter patch. some nice blends in here as well. And again I'm just sort of bringing it across the top of this section here where we're going to start getting darker but the warm grey free is going to act as a nice blend between these two sections. Okay, so now that I've um, started to get this highlight in, I can see that I need to go darker again. I'm just on the top of this head. Um, so I'm going to come in with my uh, one grey four. And I'm just going to start just darkening up a little touch along here. So we're just not quite dark enough. And this is what it's about sometimes, it's about that back and forth. As you finish one area and add in another, you'll just notice, oh, this area just needs to be a little bit darker. Okay, and then back to that one grey fray, just over the top, and just to blend back. happier there now okay right so um this part of the head so i'm just going to take the cold gray two and again i'm following the fur direction on this nose with the cold gray two and then the one gray three this is curving up here and then across. Um, like so, and then across here. Just gonna take that um one grey five just and darken. Okay. Um, and then got my gold, and I'm just going to use this gold along the side of this face. Okay, and then use the cold grey two, uh, warm grey two, just again over the top. I'm just going to blend nicely into there. Um, I'm just going to use this gold for this highlight, and we're going to use this very lightly, but it's going to add some just some fur detail into this highlight. 
And because we're not pressing too hard, it's not going to make this highlight too dark. But we're getting some nice little detailing in this highlight now. So, okay, it's starting to come together now. It's looking quite cute. <laughs> um, right, so we are going to go in with um, the, I think I'm going to do the cold grey as a base over the top of this warm grey um, in the centre of his head. I can see some blue tones. Um, so I'm going to use this cold grey, uh, cold grey too. Just again, I'm following that fur direction. And this is almost like another base layer. While I'm trying to work out what, what I want to do, um, I'm just going to build up another base layer of colours that are all going to contribute to the overall look of this piece. I'm hoping that we can do this face um, in this tutorial. That's well, we are. We're going to get the face done in this tutorial, um, including the nose. And then I'm hoping it might, I think, another two parts. I think we'll do the neck um, as one part and then the chest and finishing touches as the final part. So we're very close. Right, so on this nose, we can kind of see we've got two darker sections of fur um, in the centre of this face, which we're going to come on to soon. I just want to, like we've built up this side of the nose here, I just want to do that here, because then that'll make blending this middle section of the nose easier. So sometimes, even though sometimes I say work from right to left, sometimes it's easier to build up this side of the face as you're going along. Um, so that the middle section makes more sense to you. Um, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, it's all about building that structure of the face. Um, obviously, we're using the fur, but underneath the fur is the structure. Um, so that's what we're really focusing on, especially with um, such a short-haired dog. So I'm going to start off with my warm grey four at this side of the face. And I'm just, again, following that fur direction along here and making sure that I do follow all those changes that are going on with this fur direction. It's not all going in the same direction. And that's something that we do need to keep being aware of. Any breed of dog, you need to be aware of the changes in fur. Um, I'm then going to take my dark sepia, light pressure, I'm not going to press too hard, but remember this side of the face is darker than the other side, and this is just going to help with lightening up some of these areas, and I'm just going to darken any areas that I feel need to be darkened now that we're bringing in this section of the face. Um, and then I'm going to take my nugget and just run that over the top. And my cold grey too. A little bit of a highlight there. And in here. Okay, um, and then going to take the warm grey three no I'm going to take the copper um, and then I can go over the top of the copper with the warm greys um, so this is the copper again I'm using the copper for its grey tones that it's going to create it's hard to explain like the colour because it's it just creates a real once mixed in with these um like the gold, once it's mixed in with the greys, you're just getting a really nice tone, a nice colour. 
um, and then I'm going to go over that with the one grey three. And in here, I'm just going to darken up. Okay, yeah, and it's looking good. It's getting there now. Okay, so for the rest of the face, I'm going to come in again with this copper um, in this section. And this is just going to help us mark out the fur direction now. And I'm going to use the copper in these darker sections of fur, where we can see the darker bits of fur. I'm going to use the copper in these areas. Again, making sure that I'm mapping it in, in the correct direction of the fur. always wants it to be following that fur direction and it will take time because it's short of fur I find short of fur does take time because you're using short pencil strokes to build it all up but it'll get there again just mapping in so it's like where the shadows are in this darker bits of fur that's all we're just mapping in at the moment and mapping in that fur direction And this may take a bit of time, don't worry. Remember, for me, it's not about getting pieces out as quick, as quick, as quick, as quick, as quick as possible, like speedy. Um, I felt like my voice was stuck on repeat then. <laughs> um, it's, for me, I want some kind of accuracy and I'd rather take my time and just build up the layers and let the piece come together at its own pace. And you can see now, just by adding this base layer of the copper, we're starting to get some nice fur de definition and we're starting to get that shadow. The shadows of this darker fur is being mapped in now. And we will be going over the top of the um, this copper. Okay. Um, and a little bit here, just curving up into that bit. Okay, so you can see that we've started to get this definition now across the top of his nose. So we're going to take the one grey three and I'm just going to go over where we've done that copper and the darker sections. And I'm going to go over this with the, copper, uh, with the one grey three. And harder to say all these pencil names I keep confusing myself remember if you see different colours use the colours you see you don't have to do it exact to what I'm using you may see more or less colours than me and that's fine and we're just going to blend it outwards into that highlight as well So even though we've been working on this in different sections, we still want it all to look smooth and like it's all all the fur's part of the same dog. And that we're just transitioning between the darks and the lights. And there I can see in some places this could be smoother in blending and shading. But that's fine. It's it's a piece that I can take those points away from and learn for the next time I do a really short haired dog. I'm 
Okay, and then I'm just going to take the warm grey two over the top of um, that part um, into that highlight. Just as I go along for this section. Um, and then I'm going to take the cold grey, I've got the cold grey four. And I'm just very lightly, I'm not using hard pressure at all. Just going over with the cold grey four. Again, creating some more fur lines, but just adding some more tonal value into this fur so it doesn't look as flat. This is very, very lightly. Um, and then the cold grey two, again, just in that top highlight, just to help accentuate it. Okay, right. So back to the warm grey three over this copper section. So I've done the top half here as one little section just to help blend it. And now I'm going to come in and do this middle section. And this is with the warm grey free. Again, following that fur direction. You can see that the fur changes so, so many different directions on this nose. Okay, and then I'm going to go over that with the cold grey two. Like so. Um, I'm then going to take my cold grey five on this side of his face. Um, let me just sharpen this. Now I'm not going to press very hard, but I'm just going to darken this part of the face with a cold grey five. Just so that we're getting this blend, blend between the darker side of the face into that lighter side. So I'm going to just use the cold grey 5 to help me do that. And again, it's just creating some nice little fur lines along here. See how just by darkening it up, we're getting that nice blend now. And then just tapering those edges to make it whiter. Mm, okay. Yeah, okay, I'm getting happy with this now. It's starting to really come together nicely. Just light pressure. I'm just adding in like little fur strokes. So I just want extra little bits of fur showing. Um, and then I'm going to use that cold grey too in this section here. Just to help with that blend. And over the top. Um, and then a bit of nugget. I just want a bit more of this brown tone showing on this nose. So just kind of glazing over, not pressing too hard, just glazing over the top of there uh, for that bit of brown. Um, and I'm just going to add it in again this side. Very light pressure. Okay, right. Let's do the nose and then we can move on to the fur around the nose. 
Now, in the reference photo, this nose is out of focus, and I want my nose to be slightly in focus. Not as detailed um, as noses can be, but I do want my nose to be in detail. So I'm going to show you how I would go about um, doing that. Um, if you were to do wanting to do this in your own portraits. So I'm going to start off with a dark sepia and we're just going to map in the shape of this nose. So I'm just following the shape of the nostrils first. Mapping in these darker shapes I can see. For noses I find it easier just to map this in. Very light pressure, I'm not pressing hard yet. We don't need to press hard, we just want to map in those dark nostrils. And this is all with the dark sepia. I'm just going to darken down here and any of the darker shapes I can see. And the shape of this nose. Along here. Right, okay, so I've got the shape in, happy with that. Um, I'm going to use the um, one grey one as the base layer, and I'm just going to cover all of this nose, leaving this highlight in the middle of the nose. Um, and I've drawn that highlight out slightly bigger than it is in the reference photo just so that we can blend it in nicely and get some nice blends. I'm just applying this across the whole nose so that we can just work on this nose all at once. I do kind of like to work on my noses in one big section so that I can get the tonal values all the same. Right, so I've got my base laid down and I'm happy with the position of those nostrils. So I'm going to come in again with my dark sepia and we're going to really darken these um nostril areas up and as i'm doing this i'm going to curve this edge round because we, remember we are creating a nose and this is going to help us get a nice blend there and just curve in here and then this section is going to be dark, so I'm just going to add a pressure with a dark sepia now. In there, and do the same for this side of the nose. Again, just blending out at the edges. And I'm just following, once again, those shapes. It's all about just drawing the shapes. And it was something that took me a while to learn how to do, to follow the shapes. But you will get there. You will start looking at the shapes. And they're the shapes that you'll start drawing. I'm just going to bring that along here. Okay. So we've darkened up that nostril now. Um, and we're starting to really get some nice form already to this nose. Now rather than this nose having like a bluish tone like some noses do, I can see it's a bit warmer, it's a bit more of a brownish tone. So I'm going to come in with my walnut brown and I'm just going to map in the shape of the nose and any areas I see this brown tone. And again I'm following the shape of this nose. I'm always following that shape. So I'm curving my lines, creating a nice shape to this nose and along here as well I 
and now you can see that I'm I'm kind of adding in where on this nose where you can see like the out of focus details I'm making sure I add them in so some of these lines that you can see um and that's going to help us just create that nice look to the um the nose and make it a little bit more in focus along here and then it's along the top of this edge here and same thing here Um, and then I'm going to use the Burnt Umber uh, just for a little bit of contrast with that brown along this area here and again you can see that I've followed the shape of this nose like so. I'm now going to come in with my warm grey 5 and this is really going to start to darken this nose up. Now I'm going to leave areas for the highlights that we can see on the nose, so like these little wet lines. So I'm just kind of working around those highlights and I'm making sure that with this one grey five, I'm going into that nose and then bringing it out and round. And I'm using this warm grey in these warmer tones. I can see we've got some blue highlights, so I'm going to come in with some of the blue coal greys. But I'm just going in first with this warm grey five. And we may have to darken areas up again, and that's fine. Like I say, I, I do go back and forth with my darkening as I go along in a portrait. Okay, and along here. Just, so I'm going to use lighter pressure where I know I'm going to be blending some colours together. So I've gone over quite a bit of this now with this one grey five. Um, and that's fine because we're going to start building up some more colours into this nose. But you can see we're really starting to get that form of the nose showing through already. I'm now going to take the, I've got the cold grey five. Um, and I'm going to take this over these areas where I can see the blue tones. And again, I'm just making sure that I'm following that shape of the nose. Adding a few little lines for details, but you can see now as we're building up this nose, it's not as out of focus as the um, reference photo, but not as detailed as we need it, and that's perfectly fine. Some noses you can get loads of detail in. Um, we don't need loads in this, but we just wanted a little bit just to show that our nose is a bit more in focus than the reference photo. Again, it's personal preference. It's all down to sort of what you want to create in your portrait. I just wanted this to be a little bit more in focus. And again, I'm just going to go over. So I'm not going all over this uh, warm grey with this um, cold grey 5, but just enough in areas. Um, so we've kind of got a nice mid-tone colours now, but you can see how dark these nostrils are and the nose isn't dark enough in areas. 
So we're going to start coming in and darkening up and adding these um, highlights, especially across the top of the nose. So I'm now coming in with the Payne's Grey and I'm going to really start adding in some shadowed areas and building up this contrast around the rest of the nose. So I'm pulling it out of this darker nostril and bringing it up around the edge of his nose. And again, I'm just mapping in all these dark shapes. It's, I know I say it every tutorial, shapes, fur direction, contrast, but it, that's really what it's about. And there's times where I can go darker. Going dark, I think, is the hardest part because you're worried that you're going to go too dark and ruin the piece. But sometimes we just don't go dark enough. Okay, and then I'm lighter pressure where I'm just darkening up some areas, but I do want it to be just a bit lighter than the darkest point. Oops. Okay, so you can just see the difference that this has made already. Um, and then I'm going to take that one grey five and just go over the top here. And then take the cold grey two. And it's just going to help with that blending here. While I've got the cold... No, I'm going to use the cold grey one. I want the cold grey one in this highlight. So I'm just going to come in with a cold grey one and just add it across all of this highlight now. And I'm also going to add it over here. And again, I'm going over those dark sections. And the areas where I want that nice highlighted bit. Um, and down here. Right, okay. Uh, back to the Payne's Grey. Just darkening some of these areas up. Again, we're just making sure that we're following the shapes that we can see. And I just want to darken there. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with sort of circular motions. Just adding a few little details around this highlight. And we will blend all this together so that it looks smoother than what it is at the moment don't want it to be too smooth because it is a dog's nose but because it's not completely in focus we're gonna give it a softer look okay and then i'm going back to the one gray five and just darkening some of this up again now if you reach a point where your nose that you're really happy with how it's looking you can stop earlier sometimes you need to keep pushing those layers but we're getting to a point where i'm really happy with how this nose is looking so i'm going to stop soon um right i'm just going to take the um colgrey four so with a warm grey four, I'm going to bring it in across here to help with this blend on this little highlight and just a little bit on this edge of the nose. Um, and then take the cold grey two um, and I'm just going to darken this highlight up ever so slightly with a cold grey two. So we could have come in straight away with a cold grey too, but sometimes I just don't know if that's going to be too dark. So I'd rather start off lighter and then you can darken it up again. Um, and then the cold grey 5, just going to bring some of that in again. What we could also have done is um, applied all the colour and then come in with the putty eraser. So if I take the cold grey 5 across here, across that highlight, 
Okay, so I could then come in with this uh, putty eraser, get it to a nice little point. Oops, doesn't help when your paper does that, does it? <laughs> um, and then I can bring out some highlights with the putty eraser and just... And this will help create a nice softer look. So if you wanted to bring your putty eraser in, and just bring in some of these highlights with the putty eraser, um, you can do. And then I'm just going to go over that again with a cold grey one. Oops, piece of paper. Over the top, like so. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that now. Um, I'm just going to get the warm grey... Uh, no, I've got, uh, I'm just trying to think what colour I want. I think the, yeah, the one grey five. Um, and I just want to darken this part of the nose. So this is with the one grey five. Along here, yeah, that looks better now. Okay, right, so we've got the nose in, so now we just need to do the rest of the fur. So I'm going to come in as usual um, with the one grey one as a base layer, and I'm going to do it across the top of this nose, and we're going to start making sure that everything looks connected together as usual. Um, I'm not focusing too much on the direction of this base layer because it's so light we're going to be able to build up on top of it. Okay, right, so we've got that base layer in first, so I'm going to come in with the cold grey 2 first. And I'm making sure I'm going to follow this fur direction, but I can see that there's a bit of a bluish tone. Just had to double check I was recording, then I had a horrible thought that I'd just started drawing and I'd not press record. It's like one of my nightmares that I keep having, like, I'm going to be filming a tutorial for you guys and forget to hit record <laughs> okay so i've got the cold gray two at the top of that nose um and then towards this bottom section now we do have this bit of like skin that we need to draw in but we're just going to go in first of all with the warm gray two I want this bit of fur in first so that I can blend everything in nicely. So this is, I'm using the one grey two and I'm making sure that I'm following the fur direction now. It is a bit lighter down here, so it's going to stay quite light. Okay. So... We are going to focus on the fur again, and I am going to take the copper, like we did further up, and I'm going to use the copper to help map in some of this fur. So, coming in with the um, copper on this side of the face, and again, I'm just going to use this copper to map in the direction of the fur, and some of these darker highlight, uh, darker shadows, not highlights. My words are getting all jumbled up again. I think it's because I can feel I'm, I've got a bit of a headache again today. So for those that don't know me, I am a chronic migraine sufferer. So I do all my art and my commissions, these tutorials, um, around basically getting migraines and headaches. Um, so I know sometimes it feels like I'm going on about it, but um, so I thought I'd just explain why I constantly say I've got headaches. <laughs> And sometimes on days where my words get jumbled up is kind of the days that 
I've got a bit of a headache. Um, so yeah, I there's a little bit about me that you may not have known. So I'm just again following the shapes and I'm following that fur direction along this face. And this side is um, this side of the face is dark, so we've got more of the copper going on here um, than we do on this side. On this, on the left hand side of the face, I'm going to actually come in with a gold, which is a bit. I find it's a bit of a lighter colour um, when I apply the greys over the top. And I'm just going to, along this side, just going to add in this gold. And along here as well. I may have to just change that exposure. I just saw it flashing. I'm sorry if it's been doing that a lot. Okay. Right, I'm now going to tone down this blue highlight in this top of this um, of his face with the warm grey two first. I may look at coming over with the warm grey three, but because I'm not quite sure yet, I'm going to build it up slowly. Just at the top of this section here. Um... Okay, yeah, I'm going to use some of this warm grey free. I'm not going to use loads, and I'm just going to map in just some little details. Come down here. Just darkening up areas I can see need to be darker. And the one here. And then we're coming out of um, the little bit of fur, which we're going to start adding in soon. So this may be a bit of another longer tutorial, but I do kind of want to get as much of this face in as we can. Darker along here. Okay, so you can just see that we're really starting now to darken him up. Um, I'm going to come over that copper with this warm grey free, and I'm just going to blend it outwards into this lighter section. Again, following the fur direction. Always following that fur direction. Take my cold grey two, just want to blend here. So I know I've gone over this section a few times, but um, I'm just trying to get rid of this little harsh line that I've got going on. This is the warm grey free again. Okay, happy with that now. And then back over here with the warm grey free. Okay, and then just darkening up. We may need to darken here once we've got this little bit of nose in, but we will see. Um, I'm going to use the warm grey, uh, no, the cold grey far, sorry. Uh, just on this little bit of fur that's going up the middle of his nose. Very lightly, I'm not pressing too hard. And then I'm going to use the cold grey two over the top just to help with that blending but give us that bluish tone as well okay so we're getting there oh he's looking nice every now and then i step backwards and you can see just how he's coming together nicely okay right let's get this muzzle in so we're going to start on this side of the muzzle first just going to lighten this bit of graphite it's a bit dark okay and then i'm going to apply 
one grey one as a base layer. Actually, we should probably get that little bit of nose in, shouldn't we? Um, we'll get this base layer in, we'll do the nose and then come back to this muzzle. I keep saying that we're going to do it. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to go where you want to go. Right, I'm just going to admit that there's a base layer there. Okay, right, let's do this um, part of the nose first. So I'm going to come in with the Burnt Umber. I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use Circular Motions just so that I can get it smooth. I don't want this bit to look like fur. Um, just along there. This bit won't take as long at all. Um, and then the one grey far over the top. Followed by the cold grey four, just to help neutralise all this. Blend that outwards. Um, just going to take the Payne's grey again on the top of this nose. Um, and then take the one grey two, blend into that fur. So I'm using the fur stroke lines here. Um, I'm going to take the one grey five. Just uh, oh, that was a little bit dark. That's fine. Along here. Um, and the nugget, just to glaze over the top here. Okay, right, back to the side of his um, mouth. So, first off, I'm going to take the gold. Um, let me just sort out. I don't know if I've got that base layer low enough here. Right, so first off, I'm going to take this gold, and I'm going to bring this out from... Bottom of this nose. We do have some pinkish tones going on as well, so we'll get the light flesh out. But I just want this gold along here and coming up. Yeah, um, I'm going to take my, uh, I do want my light flesh, let me find it. So I've got the light flesh. And I'm just going to run that across this corner. Just to give a nice pinkish tone there. Um, and then I'm going to take my one grey three over this gold again just to darken this part of the muzzle up okay um then going to take the cold gray one um for a bit of a bluish tone on this side Following that fur direction, medium pressure. Just along here. It's just going to help smooth it out as well. Right, so we've got a darker patch of fur to add in now. So I'm actually going to start off with the copper um, and I'm just sort of following the shape of this marking that I can see 
and I'm just going to use the copper to do the fur direction and to map it out and bring that down. Very short pencil strokes. The fur on this muzzle is very, very short. Again, I'm not worried too much about accuracy to the photo, just want a general look of this dog. We want it to look like an Italian Greyhound when we're done. It doesn't need to look exactly like this particular dog because we're not, um, it's not a commission, we're not giving it to the owner. And as an original, you can make these, when you're doing your original pieces, you can make them how you want. So if there's a marking you don't particularly like or the marking don't go low enough, change it when it's an original. Obviously, if it's a commission, you're going to draw it as accurate as you can. But um, it's kind of why I've done it a bit differently for this piece. I wanted you to be able to see that we can change things. Um, I've now got the warm grey free and I'm going to go over this copper. And now I can see that I need to darken some of this grey up. So I'm just going over this with this warm grey free. Okay, so I'm going to come in with my um, cold grey six in this section. And we're going to, by darkening this up, it's going to push this muzzle forward and make it look like it's in front of this section of the face, which obviously it is in front of it. Um, do you see just how much that's changed that structure of the face? Just by adding that contrast. So if something's looking out of place, sometimes you just need to push something backwards with a little bit more contrast. Um, or you may need to add a bit more highlight. Um, I'm going to get my Cogre 5 here for this bit. I don't want it to be as dark as that Cogre 6. Um, and then we have a little bit coming in here. Okay, um, and then I'm taking the one grey free again. I'm just going to darken this little bit so that it's pushing that back. And darken this bend of fur here, the one grey free. Okay. So you can start to see now, we're really getting this sh nice shape to um, his face. I'm going to take the warm grey 5. Yeah, warm grey 5. Um, and down here is a little bit darker, so I'm going to just... With this warm grey 5. Darken down here. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to take the gold again. And I'm just going to add some of the fur detailing on this muzzle. Now we do have whiskers to add. I'm going to add the whiskers once we've got the neck in because we're going to have some of these whiskers going over the neck. Um, and to make it look like they're going over the neck rather than blending blending in with the neck layers, um, we'll add them at the very end. Just some little fur details. Um, I want to darken some of this pinkish tone up as well. Um, and then I'm going to go over all of that with a warm grey too. Um, take the warm grey four. Just to darken so slightly here. Um, warm grey free. Don't want it to be too dark here. This just needs to be brought in a bit more here. Um, 
Okay, that's one side of the muzzle. So this other side is now darker. Um, I'm going to bring in the cinnamon along here once we've got this side in. So um, let's just add the base layer first. So one grey one as the base layer. Uh, oh, I better just lighten this bit of graphite. So we will have a finished face by the end of this. Right, so base layer is in. So as I said, this side is darker. So we're going to start off with uh, the copper along here. And again, I'm just using this copper to help me map in this fur direction. You can see that that copper is already darker than the gold. So you can see why I've kind of been swapping and changing between the gold and the copper. Um, okay, now I want a bit more of a brownish tone for the fur. So I'm going to come in with a burnt umber. Following again that fur direction. Um, and I am just going to map in here a little bit of this burnt umber. And then I'll go back to the copper. Um, and use the copper to map in this fur. I do like using, I know I say it at the time, but these metallics, especially the grey and the gold, uh, the copper and the gold, they just give such a nice, like, oh, what's happened to that colour? Hang on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, gives a nice greyish tone. So I'm just continuing now with the um, copper. To map out along here. I feel like we may need to darken this grey up a bit. Because um, it's obviously a grey marking on the on the little white patch of fur. Um, so we may go in and darken that up. We'll have a look. We'll see what it looks like once um, we've got this side in. Like I say, this is all about um, creating a little original piece. So I'm not too worried if it's not the exact same as the reference photo, but I feel like I do want to darken it ever so slightly. Right, warm grey for, um, I think for along here, so I'm going to darken. I'm sorry if the lighting keeps changing, guys. I'm trying my best to keep it as um, the same all the way through, but I'm having some difficulties today. I think it's to do with the weather. <laughs> I will get better with my lighting and filming, I promise. Um, and I'm going over all of this now with the warm grey five, uh, four. I need to remember what colours I'm using as well, don't I? see yeah this is nice and dark i think i want this to be um, a similar tone so i'm just going to come in this side with the warm gray five and any areas i feel just need to be darker i'm just going to use this warm gray five uh, four it's not five it's warm gray four i don't know why i've got five stuck in my head um yeah i'm happier with that okay I do like when we get a little face appearing out the paper like this. It's really starting to pop now. Um, 
okay, I'm going to then get my warm grey free. And I'm going in all these little highlighty areas with the warm grey free. Um, and I'm going to go over this whole section to be fair with the warm grey free. Just going back in with this copper where I feel I need a little bit more and then my um, one grey five along here and I'm just going to darken that little marking up there. So, okay, right, and then I'm going to take the cinnamon for these pinkish tones and I'm just going to go in. Now this muzzle will look quite plain at the moment because we need to come in with all these whiskers and the little whisker markings. Um, but like I say, we're going to do that once we've got the neck in. So don't worry about it too much. Okay, right, let's get his little chin in and then we'll be finished for this part. So again, we're going to come in with our base layer of warm grey one. Just going to lift some of that graphite. Okay, so warm grey one as a base layer. Now, he has got a little hairy chin, but again, I'm going to make this chin look hairy. When we do the neck, we're going to sort of push the neck fur into this chin to give it that fur, little fur effect. Right, so that's the base layer in. I'm just smoothing out here a little bit more. Right, so we now have like this um, little knobbly chin. So I'm gonna start off with the nugget. And I'm going to bring this along the edge of where we've got this like little lip. And I'm just kind of marking out that little shape of this lip. Okay, um, and then I'm going to take the burnt umber and I'm going to use sort of circular motions. I want this to be a bit smoother and I'm going to push some of this burnt umber upwards to create that little fur effect because this is underneath those top lips. So we want that little fur effect and then this area is going to be um, circular motions. Just building up that layer slowly with this burnt umber. Okay. Um, I'm then going to take the one gray five again. Create. I'm just going to sharpen this. Hang on. I wanted a nice sharp point, so. And again, bring that up here and then darken. Right, um, and then my dark sepia. I've got a nice dark 
section in here, so I'm just going to use a dark sepia. Long blind. Very lightly along here. It's just creating that difference between the upper jaw and the bottom jaw now, is what we're doing. Um, I'm going to take, actually, I think I'm going to take my Kaput Mortar. Um, I think this will work nicely. Yeah. Take the Kaput Mortar over the top of this burnt umber. And it gives us that nice reddish tone now. Some random little fur. Um, and then I'm going to take the copper and bring this down. Nearly there now with this chin. Again, remember we may end up having to come over some of this just to darken it up as we bring in the neck, but um, he's looking good. I'm now taking the Cold Grey 2 along the bottom of his chin. Um, the warm grey free, um, and I'm just going to sharpen my warm grey free. I just want a nice fine point. I'm just going to make sure I've got a nice point to this pencil. Hang on. Okay, and he's got a nice little dark grey corner here. And I'm going to bring that across here um, and use it along here as well, just to give that little dark impression that we've got going on. And down here. I'm just going to grab that burnt umber again, just along the top of this lip. And the cinnamon in circular motions. Um, let's have a look. Are we happy with that? Take, oh, one grey free, sorry, just needed a little bit more here. Um, okay, I think, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with how he's looking. Just sorry, this is the one grey free here, just a little bit more. Okay, let's step away a minute. Okay, we just need to blend that a little bit out. Um, so go back to the warm grey four. Um, I just want a nice softer line here. Sorry about that lighting. I will work it out. It, I, think it's, I do think it's to do with the outside lighting. One minute it's really light out and then it's really dark out. Right, that looks better. Um, oh, and we just need to here. Oh, that's too dark. Warm well, grey free. Hang on, let me just sort this out. Okay. And then pick up the cold grey two just again. Over that, let's have a look. Um, and the copper. Um, 
yeah, I'm happy with that. We now have a little face. I'm yeah, I'm happy with that. So the next tutorial we will get onto his neck. Um and then we're almost there guys. We are very close to having a Italian Greyhound finished. Um so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I know it's been a bit of a longer one, but I did want to get his face done. Um and the next part, like I say, we will do the um the neck. And we'll get him finished in the next couple of tutorials I'm, I'm hoping yeah two two more i'm hoping two or three um so yeah if you have enjoyed this tutorial please remember to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you all in the next one bye everybody